Welcome to my review of Orphan First Kill, which is a prequel to the movie Orphan, which came out 13 years ago. I remember when I first saw Orphan, when it was released back in 2009. The film hooked me with its nail-biting tension, outrageous plot, and psychopathic performance from actress Isabel Furman as Esther. Spoiler alert if you're unfamiliar with Orphan, since I'm going to quickly discuss the big plot reveal in the first movie. We learn that Esther suffers from a rare hormonal disorder that stunted her growth and caused proportional dwarfism. She's basically a 33-year-old trapped in a child's body. Orphan First Kill takes place two years prior to the events of the first movie. Lena Klammer escapes from a mental institution in Estonia. In order to disguise her identity, she impersonates a missing American girl, Esther Albright, who vanished four years ago. She manages to convince both Alan and Trisha Albright that she is their lost daughter, Esther. The push to develop the prequel was inspired by a real-life incident where an adult tried to impersonate a child orphan which had uncanny resemblances to the movie. Back in 2019, reports circulated of a Ukrainian orphan by the name of Natalia Grace, who had allegedly impersonated a six-year-old in 2010 at the time of her adoption by American parents. The court later ruled that she was born in 1989 instead of 2003, which would make her around 20 at the time. Her age is still contested. Her original adopted parents, who eventually gave her up, described her as terrifying and dangerous, accusing her of trying to stab them while they were sleeping, as well as other accusations, which haven't been substantiated. I mean, wow, Orphan's premise doesn't seem so far-fetched now. It just goes to show that truth is stranger than fiction. In light of this event, when watching Orphan first kill, I kinda was more able to suspend my disbelief, particularly since actress Isabel Furman is now in her 20s. She was 9 when she made the first movie, while she is supposed to be 2 years younger in the prequel. It seems like a hard sell, but the film seems pretty self-aware about the absurdity of the age gap and makes it an element of the story. This is perhaps a minor spoiler, but the majority of the characters didn't really buy for very long that Esther is a kid, which I appreciated. I thought it helped the overall pace of the film, which doesn't have to spend a lot of time waiting for the characters to figure out Esther's secret, which also makes for some funny, awkward moments, since it's clear as day that she isn't a kid. Whereas in the first movie, Esther is the con artist manipulating everyone, the prequel changes things up by making her equally a character subject to manipulation. Esther's frustration comes from her desire to be treated as an adult, even though she's trapped in a child's body. Because she's treated as a child, she becomes a prey to the control and manipulation of others. Esther in this way is not the typical slasher. She is a victim as well as victimizer. She is heartless and nasty, but you can sort of sympathize since she exists within a world that treats her like a freak and doesn't accept her. I really love this idea of a character not fully able to develop or follow the normal stages of growth. Esther is kind of similar to a vampire, existing outside of normal time and stuck within an unchanging body. What happens when a person is not able to come of age and fully transition from childhood to adulthood? Well, the film has a lot of fun taking this premise to crazy extremes. Always treated like a child, Esther was never able to fully come into her womanhood, and has a lot of pent-up sexual frustration as a result. Her frustrated desires as a woman make the mom and dad characters her main targets. In the orphan movies, the dads are pretty stupid and their relationship with Esther becomes downright creepy at times, particularly when you see her trying to play the roles of the good daughter and loving wife to her adopted father. Isabel Furman brilliantly displays Esther's rage, suppressed desires, and deceitfulness. She is able to convey, often silently, in a smirk or a glance, the deep layers of madness behind Esther's sweet and innocent facade. 
The rest of the cast, particularly Julia Stiles, are very good as well. If I were to criticize anything, I think the film suffers from a lack of tension. I didn't find the film very scary. The kills and death scenes are routine, have little shock value, and are not really staged in a way to build suspense. The death scenes overall had little impact on me since I didn't care about any of the characters. This was a bit of a departure from the first movie, which I found incredibly suspenseful, particularly in the scenes when Esther is terrorizing innocent children. Sure, some of the characters were flawed, but unlike in the prequel, you cared more if they lived or died. I do credit the film for not following all the same beats as the original. The big plot twist leads to an even more disturbing, yet also darkly funny, family dynamic. I had fun with the movie, not so much for the thrills and scares as watching the shit get crazier and crazier with this family. The film cleverly normalizes Esther's psychopathic tendencies, and she doesn't seem like so much of a freak after all. The film was a one watch for me, but it was enjoyable and I liked the dark humor which had me chuckling at times. If you're like me and love a campy horror film, I think you might enjoy this movie. I do think the Orphan series overall is a fun addition to the slasher film genre. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and please subscribe if you haven't, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.